You know when older people try to teach you things and they preface it with, Oh, I wish I knew this when I was younger. Well, when you're younger, you're like, This is so stupid, this is just an old person talking. And then when you become the older person, you're like, I really should have listened! And then you tell the younger people to listen. It's this weird cycle. Anyway, as I get older, this is how I feel about finance, money, and honestly a lot of things in life, but it's always better to start now than never. I forget which famous investor said it, but the best time to start investing was yesterday, and the next best time is today. So given that it is, well, today, I want to explain a financial cheat code so powerful the government caps how much you can use it every year. After all, they can't be giving you too much of a good thing, right? Disclaimer, I'm still not a financial advisor, don't have plans to become one, I'm just here to educate. Any opinions you hear are purely my own, so please do your own research before making any of your own financial decisions. Long story short, don't sue me, bro. Anyway, if you've read the title, you know I'm talking about a Roth IRA, where IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. Now, hold up, before you click away because you heard the word retirement, I would like to entice you to stay for my educationally soothing voice and this picture of a cute puppy. And side note, a lot of effort goes into these videos, so if you learned something, make sure to bop that like button and subscribe for more. Tiny blurb of history, the Roth in Roth IRA is named after William Roth, a former Delaware senator, so woo, no sales tax, and it was established in 1997. You may have heard of other types of retirement accounts such as traditional IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, 221b Baker Street, Wait, that's not right. But a Roth IRA is another type of individual retirement account. Any IRA, firstly, is a retirement account for an individual. Duh. So there's no such thing as a joint IRA. They are tax-advantaged accounts that you can use to save and invest for retirement. Tax-advantaged is great to hear, as we all know we would love to pay less in taxes. Have you seen that meme that's like, I wanted to teach my child about taxes, so I gave her a cookie, took half, and threw it in the trash? That has absolutely nothing to do with the video, but that's how my brain works, so let's get back to the actual useful stuff. There are two types of tax advantage accounts, pre-tax contribution and post-tax contribution. A Roth IRA falls under the post-tax category. You contribute to a Roth IRA with post-tax dollars. Simply, you pay taxes on your income and with the remaining funds, you can deposit it into a Roth IRA. This is kind of the reverse of a 401k, which I'll cover in a future video. Now what? You have your money sitting in what is essentially a savings account, right? Wrong! A common misconception is that a Roth IRA by itself is an investment, but a Roth IRA is simply a vehicle in which you put your money that you want to invest. You still have to choose where you drive and where you put your money to work. So for example, if you deposit $100 into a Roth IRA and you don't touch it for 30 years, 30 years from now, it's not going to accrue interest. It's still going to be $100. Although you won't be able to buy as much, thank you inflation. Once the money is inside the account, you can start picking and choosing your favorite investments. Inside a Roth IRA, you can invest in a multitude of things like mutual funds, stocks, bonds, ETFs, blah, blah, blah. Feel free to give me a holler in the comments if you don't know what some of these are and I'll make videos about them. But the big idea is that you can put your money into different investments once it's inside the Roth IRA. Now comes the cheat code portion of a Roth IRA. In a standard brokerage or investment account, you're taxed on any income in that account. That includes capital gains and any dividend income. In a Roth IRA, all withdrawals, barring a few caveats I'll cover in a little bit, are tax-free. Tax-free? Thank you, William Roth. That was a lot of work, so hopefully an example will help. Let's assume you put $10,000 into a standard investment account. After 30 years of investing, you turn it into $100,000. First of all, great job. You did amazing. Those are some killer gains. Uh, if you're in the middle tax bracket for long-term capital gains, you will, at least as of 2020, pay 15% in capital gains tax. That means on the $90,000 profit that you made, the government will be like, thank you for your diligent and intelligent investing. We'll just take 13,500 of that. Thank you very much. Yikes, you already paid taxes before putting the $10,000 into the account, and now they're taking more? The joys of taxable investing. Let's take the same $10,000 and put it into a Roth IRA. Let's say similarly, you're able to turn it into $100,000 after 30 years of investing. Again, good job, you did amazing. Now, when it's time to retire and withdraw funds from the account, you don't pay any taxes on the $90,000 that you made. Beautiful. This does sound a little too good to be true, so there are a few restrictions, unfortunately. Firstly, there is a annual contribution limit of $6,000 year if you're under 50 and $7,000 a year if you're 50 or older. At least those are the numbers for 2021. If you're under 50, this comes out to an even $500 a month, which I think if your income will support it, you should definitely take advantage of. After all, I understand why we have to pay taxes, but that doesn't mean I enjoy paying them. Secondly, there is an income limit for people who can contribute to a Roth IRA. Note that it's a limit, not a minimum. So 
Anyone can contribute unless you make too much money. The government has deemed too much money to use this cheat code as $140,000 a year for singles and $208,000 a year for married couples. At least these are the numbers for 2021. However, there is an IRS sanctioned, definitely wouldn't talk about anything illegal, method that you can use to contribute to a Roth IRA if you exceed the income limit. It's called a backdoor Roth IRA. I won't cover it in this video, but it's really cool and definitely something to keep in mind if you ever need to use something like it. Oh, also you need to be 18. I forgot about that one. Like other retirement accounts, there are restrictions on when you can withdraw your money. So in a Roth IRA, you must be at least 59 and a half, weird age, but whatever, to withdraw gains. However, there are a few caveats to this. You can withdraw any contributions you've made to your account tax and penalty free. So if you put in $6,000 this year, it's worth $7,000 a year from now, you can withdraw your initial $6,000 deposit without penalty, but you will incur penalties if you withdraw from the $1,000 gain. There are a few other caveats to how you can withdraw without penalty, but I won't cover them too much. Regardless, I, as a non-financial advisor, personally put in funds that I don't plan on needing anytime soon and that I would be okay parting with until I retire. In conclusion, the Roth IRA is a retirement tool that's so powerful that the government limits who can use it and how much you can use it. By using a Roth IRA consistently over time, you see the power of compound interest and time, and you don't have to pay taxes on the gains. I'm definitely currently and will continue to use this cheat code as much as I can in the future, and I hope you learned something. See you in the next one.